here we are, relaxed on some lovely Discovery 3 seats. Right, what are we looking? We are looking at our G4 replica Discovery 3, and it had cloth seats. Now, we're not anti-cloth, are we? It's vegan. It's vegan. We need to consider these things, don't we? You can eat but them. But you, you can eat them. If you're vegan. If you're vegan, you can eat these seats. Yes, you can't eat this seat. Mm. This is made with a cow height. Okay, right. Anyway, let's not get too political. Let's get back onto the subject of seats. So these seats are dirty, oof, dusty. They're okay, but we wanted something a little more. And we happen to have a set of these lying around, which are not in mint condition. They're a little bit, like there's a little bit, a little bit ruptured there. But I thought these would be better. And these are heated. That's now. And they're also electric. So we have buttons here that do uppy downiness and forwardness and memory, memory stuff as well and we thought well could we fit these in our car now if you're looking at seats on ebay this is the giveaway if you see a, a seat with this handle coming out the front it's a manual seat so can you question can you fit lush electric seats in your low grade rubbish discovery now it gets a little more interesting i haven't even discussed this with you ty um the Range Rover Sport seats are getting quite cheap on eBay now. Um, and the seat base, the metal frame, is the same on the Discovery 3, if you look on the partner system, as it is on the Sport. So this video may help people fit Sport seats in a Discovery. What the advantage of that is, I don't know. Bear in mind the back seat won't fit because it's a different shape, but the front seats will. Right, so let's have a look underneath because that's where all the action is. Right then, so if I tip these back like so. Right. Now I have been reading the forums, so I will write. So there are basically three types of seat. There is the manual seat, and it has got an absence of any motorization under here. So, but it does have an electrical connector. It's jammed on the side there, and we will show you the electrical connector. And it's one connector, but inside it's got all these little cavities, right? Then the second type of seat, we don't have, right? But it would be like this, and the second type of seat is an electric seat, but it doesn't have any memory positions. So you cannot set it to memory position one, two, or three. Now the thing is, if you have a memory seat, not only do you need electric motors to move your... You also need a sensor that knows where the seat is. So is it is it 90% reclined, 80% reclined, 70% reclined? So not only does it, because if you press the memory one button, it needs to go, okay, I need to go to the 60% or the 70% position. So it needs to have motors and sensors. So first type manual, second type electric, no memory third type electric with memory now when you have the electric with memory not only do you have your connector which should be on a little plate that we've taken off sitting about here you also have this other gray connector now it turns out this gray connector is more to do with sending outputs for your mirrors because when you go to memory seat one not only does your seat go to that your mirrors adjust because i guess your head is in a different position if you're exceptionally tall like mm. Tyler, right? Anyway, so, and this, you will also have this little box of witchcraft and wizardry here, which controls all the motors. But th this wire here, I can unplug it if I want. This wire here is, is, if I can unplug it, I did unplug it. I can see that. Oh, I got it there. Have I got it. It's a little tab. There yeah. you go. So this actually, this one goes to the switch pack here. So, so it takes the signals from the switch pack and you can manually control it without using and it gives all the outputs to the motors. So I'm hoping, I haven't tried this yet, but I'm hoping to be able to fit this memory top. I don't really want to use the memory seat function. I'm not, as long as I can move it backwards and forwards, I'll be happy with that. And in our car, we haven't got the loom for this, but we do have this connector. Now the interesting thing is, you will notice, I don't know how easily we can compare, probably quite difficult. Um, you'll just have to believe me. But if you look here, we've got red, blue, orange, yellow, that's it. Here, we've got red, blue, orange, yellow, and 
this extra bonus black connector with wires coming out of it here. You can see that, right? So this one, so what does this extra one do and what am I missing? Right, but let's go and look. Let's go and look in the in the car. Let's have a look in the car. Right, oh, and we'll need some more light. Right, hold on a minute, let's get some more. Right, we're now in the front of our Discovery 3, so with a, with a light. So this is what the other end of that connector looks like, and that mates, and you can see all the mating. Now, you will notice that on our seat, we only had the four positions populated, which, I can't remember which four they were, but I think it's this one, this one, this one. But you'll notice that this one has got the wires going to it for, the, for this extra one, the black one, and that's actually heated seats. Um, so the car has got functionality in the wiring loom that the seat hasn't got. And also you'll notice these big fat wires here we've got. This big brown and green and this big, well he's a black one in there somewhere. Yep. There he is, look, those two. Now these don't connect to anything. If we go back to the seat, so it's the one above the actual fixing bolt there. These go to nothing in our car. So they've obviously put some cableage there. Now we've looked at the wiring diagram and we'll, we'll, we'll share that with everybody. And this looks like it's the main power feed, which would make sense because they're big fat ass wires. Right, so that's what we've got. But you'll notice we do not have anywhere a plug for that gray memory function. So I don't think we're ever gonna get the whole memory thing working, um, but we'll have a go. So. Right, I think what we're gonna have to do is cut these two wires here off, snip, snare, and I'll show you where I think we need to connect them to to get life out of it. Let's go and have a look. So this is my original seat again, zoom out a little bit tight. This is the manual seat. So you will notice that opposite the fixing bolt hole, can you see that little brass nut in there? Yep. If you look opposite here, here, you'll see that this bit is not populated. There is nothing in here. So. That there were those where those two big fat wires went, so obviously, there to give you extra functionality for something else. And also, you'll notice here this one here, which has got the heated wires on the car, there's not this not on the seat. So, obviously, my car has got the capability to control more than the seat they fitted me, which is good news, right? Right, so that's that. By the way, there's a little tab there that folds down, you can see that. To get that off there, there's a little square bit on there. So if you need to undock those from there, that's how that works. Right, so, right, so the plot thickens. When we look at the wiring diagram, you will notice, is it a coincidence? I think not, that we have got a big green and brown wire here and a big black wire here. I think if I snip these two here, make a connection, and connect those to the big brown and green wire on the car, I reckon it might put some life because those brown, the brown and the brown and black wire come up to here and give power to this. So I'm hoping if this has got power, it can see the signals from the switch packs. It can give the output to the motor. I think these are mainly all the little ones here are mainly outputs for mirrors and things. And that seems to be what we can work out with our limited knowledge. That seems to be what we reckon in it, Tyler. Yeah. So I'm just going to disconnect those two there, and then plug all this in because I've got wires to mount here. I haven't got any connector to go in there. I guess if we were really cool, we could find the connector that clicked into the body and join that to that, but we ain't that good, are we, Tyler? No, just no. Need, don't need no. that. We're just cutting, right. So I think that's all for now. I think when we join you again, we should have this seat in the car. Yeah, let's do it. Oh, one more thing I'll show you. Um, so we've worked out the functionality of all these. So let's go back to the manual seat and say, well, if this seat is manual, why the hell have we got all these electrical connections? And basically I've worked them all out. One of them's a bit weird. Which one's that weird one? That I'll put all this on the document. The one with the black and white wire, this burgundy one, that, that goes to this little slider here. So there's this little metal bracket on the seat. And there's, when it passes through this little gate here, it senses the position. So that's a seat slider position sensor. Why it needs to know where the seat is, I'm not sure, because it will only let you know when it's at its extremities, right? Then the one with the yellow sleeving around it and the yellow plug, that is goes to the seat belt, that goes to the airbag, the explosive airbag on the side cushion of the seat. 
Then there's another one that goes to the seatbelt buckle to tell you when your seatbelt buckle's done up, which I think was the blue one. And then I, but I've got it all on the dial. And then the orange one was the seatbelt pretensioner, which fires the charge for the seatbelt to retract in. Um, but we'll put all that on the website. So, so even with no motors, you still have got the seatbelt and the airbag functionality. Um, and when you jump over here, this is these four here are all seat bag and air seat bag and <laughs> lost right <laughs> seat belt and airbag functionality <laughs> and these ones are for the heated seat um so yeah we are going to snip these wires join them in the car and see if it works okay we lied we're not going under the car quite yet what i thought is i'll show you how to do this out of the car and what we're going to use to join our connect together is these little Wago connectors, which are lush. I love these things. Uh, you open them like this, and then you poke the wires in. And if you put two wires in here, you can get these two-way, five-way, three-way, whatever, and it will join all the wires in this unit together. So if we put two wires in, it will join them both together. Um, and it's got little clips, and when you close it down, it, it grips the wire, and they're really cool. Um, and they should be rated enough to take the power for this. So I'm gonna, I'm not gonna cut it right at that. Let me just cut that, cut that off. Just to give me a bit more room. Well, it didn't give me a lot more room. It's all taped up. Uh, it's fully taped. Up. Right, and let's, right, let's free those wires. Come here. Right, there's one. There's two. Uh, in case anyone ever reads, I'll leave a little bit visible. So if we ever need to reconnect there. Now these are not a quality pair of wire strippers, but I'll try and do it. Alright, now let me just check that. Get a little twist, keep them all together. So obviously that's going to be my... Yeah, they're perfect for that. And then look, you can't pull that off. Obviously, don't put the two wires in there. That's got no meaning. That's going to short those together. It's going to do nothing. It's going to do nothing. Right, there we go. Look at that. Right, so what we'll do is we'll do the we'll disconnect that connector in the car floor, and then up there already then to receive the two wires from the car floor, and that'll be that'll be sweet under there, won't it? Yeah. No need to go soldering or doing too much. Easy. Right. Okay. Let's go and have a look what needs doing inside. Yep. So this is there's nothing too complicated here either, I don't think. So have that brown and green there, if I can get it on there without Oh right. I need a cup of tea time. It's tea time. It's tea time. Everyone says they're so British, you have a cup of tea. It's law in Britain, you have a cup of tea every Right now hold on, what we got? Well I've connected both of those. And they're they're sort of I reckon if we just separate them from this a bit tighter it'll give us a bit more room so i'm going to feed those out of that cable tie there it's a bit a bit all right and that and then if i come on as well stream those and i and then they're ready we don't have to be crawling around in the dark then Yeah, and ideally, once they're in those little Wago connectors, you don't want any copper showing. You don't want any exposed, no. just in case something touches against something. You never want exposed copper. Anything. Never want exposed copper. Right, we're all good there. Good. Right, go on, Tyler, get on with it. Get the seat bolted in. The eagle-eyed amongst you will notice the seat is not in the car. And that's because we put it in and it didn't work. So we've done a bit of head scratching. We've had a cup of tea. A cup of tea always helps. And we've looked at the wiring diagram. Flick, flick that wiring diagram up again, Tyler. Let's have a look at that. Right, now we had connected this here, this brown and green, um, onto the V battery. We had connected this black earth here. Now Tyler, fair play, he spotted this extra V bat here with this red and white wire and this extra electronic ground here. Now, interestingly, this electronic ground says it's connected back over here. Um, 
but we, we're going, we've done some testing and it seems like you've got to connect this one. So let's go back over. So basically, we, as well as those, those two wires, you have to connect these two wires. These are thinner wires. Now, note that this wire is fed via a 5 amp fuse. So we're going to have to add an inline 5 amp fuse, but I think I've worked out a way to do it. So let's go over to the seat and have a look. So, yeah, we think we've worked out how to do it. So, right, so they're the two big ones that we cut off the end of here, okay? So that's the, the brown and green and the black. Okay, we've got those. Now, the other two we need are these two that I've cut off, and I'll show you I've cut them off, but you can see it's a black and a red and white, or technically a white and red, actually, isn't it? So these are on, this is the big end. They're the last two on the end of this grey connector here. You can see them there. We've got a black and a white. Okay, now we're going to have to change these to three-way connectors. So let me do the power one first. So we're going to have to take that off. And I'm going to swap for a three-way Wago connector. So that will be my battery positive, right? And then I'm going to put a two-way one on the red and white. But this needs to be fed through the 5-amp fuse. So that needs to go in there. Give them a pull. And this 5 amp fuse needs to go. That will take its power when we get the power from the main connector under the seat. So that's now fused. So that is all the power to that's the seat. That's all the power, yep. Right, and then we need an earth. We need to swap the two-way on the earth for a three-way because we've got to have that main earth there. We've also got to connect that, that what do they call it, electronic earth? Yeah. Okay, we'll connect the electronic earth in. And then when we go under the seat, we're just looking for those two wires there. That will be the green and brown or brown and green. And that will be the black. And we'll set that all up and we'll go and test that. All this other stuff we can connect out the way. Now the good news, that's the bad news, but we, we think we fixed that now. The other thing was passenger seat, plugged it in, boom, everything works. So there's no modifications needed to the passenger seat, which is good news. Now, of course, this is for right and drive cars, but I think the same should be true, but you'll have to sort of swap it around that way, if you see what I mean. Right, let's get on. Tyler, will you put the seat back in the car for me, please? Yep, all again. So you'll notice we're in the car now. It's a good sign. Right, so what have we got? We have some electric, but what you'll notice, if, as I press it, I'll press it and hold it, it only does, that's all you get. I'll do it again. So. It doesn't, you don't get the continual slide. So you have to press it multiple times. And the same on all of them. But. But it works. It works. It's happy enough. We can get it where we want it. We can. Everything works. Uh, the memory functions don't work. Uh, not that I can work out. Anyway. But we have got an electric seat. But. Which is good. Because originally we thought we'd have to drive like this for the rest mm. of the time. But no. Right. Seriously. So what have we not got? We haven't got a heated seat yet. If you come in here and have a little look, I think we're gonna to have to change this to the one with the heated seat button. So apparently that will work. So we'll get one of those on order and see if we can change that to the heated seats. Rear seats, we haven't done the, the, the rear seat, heated rear seats yet. We fitted them, but we'll have a look for that wire. Um, what else have we not, or what else have we not covered? Ah, Tyler's done all that stuff he was looking at on the computer with the wiring colors. We'll put a link to that in the description slash comments below. Um, that's it. Good luck with that. If you subscribe, I've never asked people to subscribe before. It feels a bit cheesy. <laughs> if you subscribe, then when we do the video for the seats, you will get a notification, apparently. Apparently, George, my son, says I've got to ask people to subscribe. Right. Okay. Good luck with that. I hope you managed to get your luxury electric seats fitted in your base model Discovery 3.